Hello, Bluetooth. I have a tag for you today. Uh, I had originally a different tag in mind, but then all the cool kids started to do one tag only, so I switched my attentions over to that. This is the you, Your Answer Can't Be Books tag. Now, I was tagged by Mark, Mark Richardson, who tagged a bunch of other great people, and I've seen a whole bunch of other great people do this. Lots and lots of fun. And the whole point of the tag is to talk for, for once about things that aren't books. Uh, and in order to facilitate doing that tag, I got rid of all my books. And also that fugly little dog <laughs> that's constantly demanding attention. Not only to help with the tag, but also to help me on my minimalism journey. <laughs> so, all I now currently have is the Star Trek data pad on which I am doing this video. And you suspicious Aloysiuses out there may be saying, well, what about your clothes? Um, uh, excuse me, uh, these clothes are made of braided kelp and I will be eating them for supper. Okay, uh, so check your privilege. Uh, so question number one, what is something that you own way too many of other than books? Well, right now that's nothing because I am a typical black ring bullcrap YouTube minimalist. But before this great momentous life decision, I think the thing I probably owned more of than I should have that other than books was laptops. Maybe you can go so far as to say technology. But let's say laptops. I had 16 of them. And that's excessive. <laughs> For anybody, that's excessive. I have an excuse. <laughs> I've said it many times before on this channel. For years and years, probably for 10 years, I had an old EEE PC, a netbook. And it was a workhorse. And I worked it to death. I worked it so, I got so much writing done on that little machine. And it was sturdy and it was really cute. And it really, once we expanded its memory uh, with a, a bump on the bottom so that you had extra memory and a grip, it was perfect for my needs for almost the whole length of that time, long before I had a cell phone, long before I had any kind of tablet. And eventually it was impaired. A piece of uh, malware got into it and the thing was fairly sophisticatedly designed for the time period. It was, its memory was rather heavily partitioned, so it wasn't completely disabled. There was a chunk of it that I couldn't use anymore that had to just be jettisoned, but it was still a functional machine. Uh, and it used to have glitches every once in a while, and this was in the infancy of my interaction with computers of any kind. And every time it had a glitch, my whole world froze. I had no idea what to do. I had to call a tech friend and just wait, hands in my laps, unable to do anything. And that instilled in me a DNA deep desire for redundancy in my technology, which may have been the reason why I kept buying laptops, even after I had rock solid, reliable ones. I have a 2013 MacBook Pro and a 2013 MacBook Air. They don't make any more reliable machines than those. Uh, but I think that accounts for why I had so many. <laughs> 16 laptops is a bit much. Uh, question number two is, what is something that you do for fun that's not reading a book? I could answer this on a technicality and say writing. Writing is not reading a book. And I do writing for fun. I deeply, deeply enjoy it. Even when I've got an absolute turd of a book to review, I still enjoy the process. I love the process of writing. I'm not one of those writers that, that as the saying goes, loves having written but hates writing. I love the process of writing. Juggling and wrestling with all the individual words, t testing out different sentence lengths and different tenors. I love it. I love every part of it. But if that is cheating, since it's still book related, well, I could say my, my fugly little dog, <laughs> Frida. Uh, I, that has nothing to do with books and is so, so enjoyable to just break off from the human world and spend time with her. So, uh, question number three is what is something special or important on your nightstand? that's not a book. Uh, well, keep in mind, I don't have a nightstand anymore. Don't have a bed anymore. I, that's excessive. If you're a true blue bullcrap minimalist on YouTube, you won't have any of those things, except in your actual apartment across town where you really live. You certainly won't have them in your fake studio where you have six black t-shirts and your bullcrap ring. Um, and also the nightstand, isn't as talismanic a location for me as it is for a lot of people because I don't sleep anywhere near as much as a normal person does. So it doesn't become a repository of all my hopes and dreams the way it does for a lot of other people. I would say aside from books, 
Uh, the only other item that's regularly on there is uh, a, a tablet of some kind, a, a, a devi an electronic device, whether it's a, a mini tablet or, or a full-sized iPad, uh, which is good for reading, it's good for writing, and it's good for the internet. So it also comes with its own illumination, so it kind of removes the need for a, a lamp on the nightstand. It's a really a really a one size fits all thing. Uh, then let's see here. Number four, question number four is what's something that you buy at a bookstore other than books? Terrific question. My local, if we stick with big retail bookstores here, not someplace like the Brattle Bookshop, uh, my retail big retail bookstore in Boston is the last big retail standalone bookstore uh, for Barnes and Noble the American superstore chain and it has a vast newsstand section gigantic thousands of different titles thousands so the newsstand starts at the midway point in the store and just extends forever all the way to the back of the store all the way along the windows and those titles come in all the time every week every month every other month in a profusion of variety. And I used to work at that bookstore, so I know perfectly well the mind-boggling variety of what comes in. And I could use that, I could say that, but even that might be squirming out of the question because it's at least reading, so it's kind of books tangential. So I would say uh, bookmarks with tassels. My local Barnes & Noble, if you want to call it that, my Barnes & Noble had, always has a spinner rack with uh, tassel bookmarks, and I just, I like them. I think they're, I, not only do I love the look of them just aesthetically, but I think they work more practically in a book than a non-tassel bookmark. And those change all the time. I'd say every every uh, month they get either a few new selections or an entirely new selection. And often tied to some sort of uh, major conglomerate's publicity push. So a part of me, even though I'm not looking forward to the movie Dune, a part of me is hoping there's a whole bunch of Dune merchandise, including tassel bookmarks. I'd be happy to have a few of those. Absolutely happy. Same thing is true with uh, if, uh, what's the name of it? Strange New Worlds? The new Kurtzman Star Trek show? Uh, if that actually does get launched, if that actually does happen, part of the gigantic mind-staggering budget for it will be a whole bunch of merch. There'll be notebooks, there'll be uh, I hope, tassel bookmarks, there'll be all sorts of things like that. That's what I look at that spinner rack for. I look at it for, for, you know, the, for instance, for years and years, you, there was a reliable, refreshing rate of Marvel movie-related stuff. Some of those can be fun to have. Uh, uh, question number five is, what's a fun gift that you've received that wasn't a book or a gift card for books? Here I want to echo something that Vin at Revenant Reads says, which is, uh, maybe a message for those of you listening <laughs> who, who may be in the position. All of us who love books love getting bookstore gift cards, <laughs> okay? We all love it. I know that in, in the typical world, a gift card, a gift certificate of any kind to a bookstore is viewed as the sort of lamest last minute choice as a gift. Book people don't feel that way. I don't know a single book person who wouldn't be absolutely overjoyed at getting a gift card of any size from somebody. They wouldn't consider it a lame gift at all. You know what they do consider lame? You getting them a book you only kind of just sort of heard of that you think they might like, that of course they read 10 years ago. <laughs> and then they're going to have to put a fake smile on their face and just grit their way through it. Whereas if you give them a gift card, they get to choose. Uh, so I, you know, there's that. <laughs> I, should, I should second his call. I love getting bookstore gift cards. Love them. Uh, but in terms of gifts I've gotten that weren't books, there's, of course, Mega Stuff Oreos. Every once in a while, a lot of you will take it upon you to send me Mega Stuff Oreos. Or there's even a, a, a variation of Mega Stuff Oreos called Most Stuff. I never see them in any of the stores that I have any access to. I never see them. Uh, but every once in a while, one of you does. And you, put, you put a couple of packages in the box and send them to me, and I'm eternally grateful. Uh, question number six is, what's a YouTube channel that you watch that's not related to books? I watch, I subscribe to about a thousand channels on YouTube, and of those, I would say probably 750, maybe even 800 are booktube channels. But that leaves a lot that aren't, uh, and I love to recommend them. Of course, I'm not going to stick with just one, so I'm going to recommend four channels here. The first is TechWiser. I'll leave links to all of these down below. Uh, the first is TechWiser. It's a, a technology channel. I love the way the hosts deal with this sort of stuff. A lot of times technology channels are polluted almost immediately by insider baseball high-tech lingo. 
almost immediately most of these channels forget that a lot of normal people are going to be coming to the channel in order to find out about a piece of technology. They, they forget that. Once you get, I think, your first free review item from a manufacturer, you will forget that. Once you get your first invitation to a tech show, you will tend to forget that. That's one of the, the standing joke on this channel is that if I ever made a tech channel, I would certainly not forget that. Reviews are reviews right across the board. It doesn't matter what you're reviewing. The principles are always the same. And the first principle of reviewing is to keep your audience in mind. The, the normal people who watch, listen, read your reviews want to be informed about something in plain, engaging language and then have it judged. I would never forget that if I had a tech channel, which is, I suppose, why I, no one's considering it for me. <laughs> but TechWise was great. They, they do sometimes forget that first principle, but not always. Not nearly as much as a lot of other tech channels. Uh, then the next one is Dr. John Campbell, uh, and he's very specific, time-specific. I'm thinking that despite the success of his channel, on one level, no one would be happier than he would if he suddenly had nothing to talk about because his channel is entirely devoted to COVID-19 and is an enormous, cool breath of fresh air against all kinds of alarmism and blatantly false material and all sorts of other stuff that you will get on YouTube and everywhere else about COVID-19. He just breaks down data. He does it in a very, very plain spoken, engaging way. Uh, and so, you know, I, I, you, might, you might very well, very understandably say, I, the last thing I want to do is watch a YouTube channel about COVID-19. And I would understand that. I would agree completely. But if, like me, you are really interested in this as a subject on a day-to-day -day basis, this is the most historically important thing that's happened in, in most of our lives. Unless there's some people watching you that remember World War II. There's... there's Nothing else that, that is at the same level. We could, that could change. An asteroid impact, for instance, could change that, that. Or a much, much worse global pandemic of a virus. Something 10 times worse than COVID-19. That is easily possible. And if that were to happen, well, or a, a major earthquake in a major population center, or something like that. Or I, uh, 40 years ago, my first answer on that list of possibilities would have been war. Uh, but my money is on an asteroid strike uh, uh, where something the size of, uh, I don't even know, uh, the Matterhorn, <laughs> so, or something the size of the Matterhorn strikes a population center, uh, or even not a population center, even like, for instance, the vast wheat fields of the American Midwest, that would change the whole world. And, and there'd be nothing that anybody could do about it. I, I find it hard to believe if that happened, that even the current neo-Nazis in control of this country could effectively produce misinformation on it. Well, I mean, how are you gonna tell your, your uh, Trump bitter enders that the sky is not dark when it is? Maybe I'm wrong about that. Uh, the, those same people have been telling their core base clan audience for a year now that, this, that, that COVID-19 is no worse than the flu. The factual proof all around them that that isn't true. They still believe it. They still repeat it. And they're still willing to overthrow the government of my country because of it. So I, I could be wrong. Even an asteroid sorry, might not get through. Um, but anyway, uh, I'm, not, I'm not comparing Dr. John Campbell to a disaster channel. He is, however, giving really good, intelligent, front-rank uh, dispatches on this big era-defining disaster, so I'd recommend it. And the next one is one I've recommended many times before, Isaac Arthur. He has a uh, popular science channel that is terrific, absolutely terrific. I've watched the channel grow. Uh, it's amazingly good. Uh, hard science speculation on every subject under the sun, from the solutions to the Fermi paradox, to uh, terraforming alien worlds, to potential extrasolar disasters, everything just the way it should be done. He is, he is uh, just amazingly good at extrapolating all kinds of what-if scenarios. He is, uh, I often like to think of this channel as science fiction without the fiction. He is, it, stuff hasn't happened yet, but if it's going to happen, it's going to happen in the way he describes it. Uh, that, that is just absolutely terrific for me. Uh, and then, of course, we'll finish up with Sasquatch Central, <laughs> which is a, a clip channel on YouTube all about, you know, did someone see a Sasquatch in Florida? Did someone film a Sasquatch in the Sierra Nevadas? Did someone see the dog man or film 
of the audio of a Sasquatch screaming at night and all that sort of thing. And you, you know, it's video after video after video, and it's all done in, in fun uh, by a believer. Uh, the more time you have spent out of doors in the wilderness, especially in North America, the more instantly you're going to be able to dismiss 99.9% .9 of the videos that are posted on Sasquatch Central, the more instantly you're going to watch a grainy, out of focus five seconds of video and say, okay, yeah, that when you add in the, the, the creepy sound effects and the music, it's pretty disconcerting. You, if you watch it, if you just hit the mute button on your laptop, then immediately the whole of your brain says, that's a bear. <laughs> and it just happens over and over and over and over and over again. Oh, yeah, okay, right. Oh, different camera angle, oh, different narrative, oh, different creepy music. Oh, wait, that's a bear. <laughs> but anyway, for true believers, for diehard true believers, Sasquatch Central is essential. Uh, and then the last prompt is to tag five booktubers you want to know more about. Because that's the whole point of this tag, is to sort of get a look at the stuff in your life that isn't books. And for me, there's no way that I'm going to do that. Instead, I'm going to tag everyone who's watching. Because I'm curious. I want to know more about all of you. <laughs> Not just five people. I want to know more about all of you. I love these questions. Uh, so if you're watching this, from your way too cluttered living space, be better. Okay? Uh, do this tag. <laughs> In the meantime, I'm going to wrap this up and go and uh, do nothing. Because even doing stuff is maximalist. Mm. Wrong side of history. <laughs> but I will see you soon. Thank you, Mark.